The market's at all-time high, Josh. Should I take gains? Should I get out? I, but I've had, been sitting on a bunch of cash. Should I? How should I get in? These are all the questions I get all the time. I can't attribute uh, this question or these questions to anyone specifically because I get them all the time. On all the live streams I do, on the emails I get, I just on the YouTube channel, all the time. The market's at an all-time high. What should I do? In fact, I was just listening to, uh, again, that Jonathan Clements uh, interview with um, Big Al and that Joe guy, Money in Your Wealth. Interesting podcast. I actually enjoy, I enjoy them. They, I think I, I see a lot uh, in the same way they do for sure. So I'm a, I'm a fan of their podcast. I don't know what they do for fee. I have no idea, but I, I like their podcast and their YouTube channel. Big fan. Big fan. Big fan. But anyway. All right, so let's talk about this. Um, the market's at an all-time high. What should I do? And I just, the first thing is all-time high compared to what? I mean, literally, that's the first thing. All-time high compared to what? Well, historical. Oh, really? Okay, so let's take a gander, shall we? Is it really at an all-time high compared to historically? So if you look today, the current P.E. ratio is 22.8, all right? The current P.E. ratio is 22.8 um, for the S&P 500 dated uh, yesterday. All right, that's the current P.E. ratio, 22.8. So bear with me just a second. Uh, all-time high, nope. All-time high, nope. All-time high, nope. What was the P.E. ratio here in 19? That's at 1994 is higher. Uh, 18, uh, seven. So this isn't all-time high. I mean, it's, it's far from it. All-time high was around here. All right, then it fell at the end of the quarter of last year, and now we're not back at all-time high. So it's higher, sure, but we've had many times where the market is all-time high. But, Josh, don't you see... When it was at all-time highs before, it fell. Well, if you look at, if you can back test this any day you want to say here, 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 here. Uh, but was this at an all-time high? I mean, this was pretty doggone close, and it fell, but then it went back up. Was this at an all-time high? Well, it fell, went back up. All right. So what I want to show, share with you here is this was at an all-time high right there. So now it's at an all-time high, but apparently that was at an all-time high. So what is? It? I mean, are we at an all-time? So the, the issue is we're not at an all-time high. Does that mean it can drop? Of course, it can always drop. I mean, look at this. It wasn't at an all-time high, then it dropped. We're 70, oh, 73 and 74 right here. Certainly wasn't at an all-time high right here, and then it dropped. Actually, that's a perfect example of it right there, a dead cap bounce right there. It drops, comes back up, and it drops again. I don't know if we can see in 2000. and That's 2000. And not really going to be able to see in 2003. But anyway, perfect example of a dead cap bounce. That would be one right there, too. Drops, comes up a little bit, drops again. Uh, anyway, so right there is per where was it? 73, 74. Kaboom, boom, boom. So was that at an all time high? I mean, you could have sold there, right? Sure. This was this at an all time high? You could have sold there, sure. And then it fell. Are you getting back in there? I bet you, I, I don't know. But was this at an all time high? Was that an all time high? Is that all time high? Of course, the, the people say yes, but. If I would have sold here, I could have bought back here, sold here, bought back here. My friends, you can't do that. No one can do that. I'm just, just you got to stop that. You just got to recognize that if you're in the market, i.e. stocks, there is going to have this stuff all the time. You just look at this. Up, I mean, you could start back here. This is 73, 74. Bad time to start investing. But if you would have held in there, you would have done just fine. Up or down, up a little bit down. And you're like, oh, my goodness. This is where Business Week wrote their iconic the death of equities and then shoop shoops 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 and so if we go right here look at that trajectory just like that from 80 to 2020 basically just like that nice up market even though we've had a lot of uh, uh, ups and downs along the way so we've established hey we're not at an all-time high all right so let's do that now if we look at the Schiller Cape cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio and this is where we take 10 years and extrapolate it to get some data from it that way we're not just looking at uh, all-time highs relative to these anomalies essentially we're, we're kind of stretching the data out to say hey are we at all-time size and here we are right here at uh um i think that's it right yeah four uh, i think that's it right there so we're at what's that shape the shiller is at 28 right I think that's it. Uh, about 30. I can't tell what date that is. Anyway, either way, it's about it's between 28 and 30. Let's just say that. And historically, that's much higher than ever has been before. Now, here we got 2000. That was one an all-time high in the Cape, 42.87. The cyclically adjusted price-to-earnings ratio that was significantly higher than we've ever seen before. Here is a 1929. So if we can back 
test this. Say, look, in 1929, it warned us. In 2000, it warned us. And then even in 2009, it warned us. But if I'm not mistaken, I think they've made some changes to this. Be the way. So here we go. In 2007, you're sitting there. Look, it's all-time high. In 2009, it's all-time low. Well, not all-time low, pretty low. And again, you're sitting there thinking, this has got to be indicative of something. Well, people have been saying that Schiller, the Cape, has been an all-time high for the last 10 years. In, in 2011, and see, they made some changes to this. I forgot off the top of my head. Read Jeremy Siegel when they talk about making changes to it a little bit. But anyway, 2011, it was 23, and historically, it's been a lot lower than that. I mean, so historically, it's about 15.5 of memory serves in 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 15. So, ah, so you would have missed all this right here if you would have sold when it broke 20 because in 2000. In 10, it broke 20, and then from 2009 to 2010, you had a good up year, but from 2010 to 2019, you've done incredibly well. But again, it has historically not been above 20. I mean, look at that, just a few years, and every time it's been above 20, it's, uh, it's corresponding times have gone down south. So now we're looking at above 30, right? Oh my goodness, all time high, all right? So that, again, that could forewarn something. I'm just telling you, not it's not going to be. All right, so now. What do we have to look at? Well, we got to look at all-time high compared to what, which we just did, and the answer is not at all-time highs. But then we also have to say compared to what, and that's is where the fun kicks in. Here is our 10-year history of the 10-year Treasury. If we go back to 10, 1871, 5.32, you can see threes. These are 10-year Treasury bonds right here. Go back to this is the chart I'm using when I do my retire on Wellington fund. You can see 3.42. We can see 4% in 1912. Then when the Fed came out, we can see 5% in 1921. We can see in 1933, 2.79, 3.31, twos, 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 2.9. And then it doesn't go below uh, 3% essentially for, well, I'll show you here. So 1957 is at uh, 3.46. And you'll notice 1975 is twice that. 1985 is uh, three, four times that almost. And you'll see here, it doesn't go back until 2009 where it went below two. And then in 2012, it was at 1.97. And now as we're sitting here today in 2009, the 10-year treasury is at 2.02. It's about to go below uh, 1%, uh, 2% again. So the issue is anytime you're comparing the P.E. ratios of these things right here, you got to compare it to an alternative investment. And I don't mean alternative investment like a hedge fund. I just mean where else can you park your money? And the issue is you can park your money in a 10-year treasury and get uh, 2%. And back in 1982, you could park your money in a 10-year treasury. Oops. And get 1982. You could park your money in a 10-year. This is the 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 bottom of the market. You could park your money in a 10-year treasury and get 14.59. Is there? Does it any wonder why the PE ratios would be so low? Then I mean, think about it. If I can get 14.59 guaranteed from the government, comparatively speaking, and I'm paying eight as a PE ratio of the S&P 500. Is there any reason why the P.E. ratios be so low? Well, yes, because the alternative investments are yielding so much higher. I mean, I just it's, I don't this whole idea that the market is trading all time high is part of the equation. Hey, we know that's not true, but they are highly the P.E. ratios are higher relative to historical norms. That's a fact. I don't deny that. But the reason is because the alternative the alternative stuff is so low. I mean, look, you get you go back to 1973. So 1973, you're getting 6.46 on the 10-year treasury. Uh, the PE ratios in 1973, at least the CAPE, let's go back to Schiller's CAPE, and I don't know what it was. Let's take a look. 1973 was at uh, 18. I mean, that's not, we can even start. I mean, look at that. So 1968 is at 22.8. And, 19, and this is the whole thing with 1966. But in 1973, it's at 18. So you'd have to say, I, I mean, what? You, you, <sighs> You, there's the PE ratios are low. Why? Because the yields are so much higher. So who would have sitting there said, "Oh man, the 18 is pretty high." But again, no one said that. No one said that back then. It's just because it doesn't make any sense. And, and I'm not saying this won't make sense. I have no clue. But what I'm saying is, why do you only compare the PE ratio now versus historical? It doesn't make sense when you have bond yields incredibly low compared to historical. But that's not even the equation. The ultimate equation is compared to what is compared to what it's going to be 10, 20 years from now. That's what you got to look at. What is the P.E. ratio today compared to what it's going to be in the P.E. ratio? I just want to talk about price. 
I mean, what's the market going to be? These $25 trillion of the largest 500 companies in the United States, where will they be 10, 20 years from now? Are they going to be significantly lower, higher, or, or even? Well, has there ever been a history since the modern stock market of 1871 where they haven't been significantly higher over 20 years? The answer is no, there hasn't been. It was like three times or in, in the last 10, over 10 years, they haven't been higher, but nothing. I mean, just been no, is, if you, if you, are you going to be around 20 years from now? If the answer is yes, and you need to keep up with purchasing power, i.e. inflation, there is no alternative for you, man. There's not. And off to say, well, I, I, maybe I can buy on the dips or maybe I can do the, like, you know, buy here and sell here and buy. I mean, you can't do that. I mean, try the, the market is littered with smarter people than you who tried and failed. So my last argument here is let's take a look at uh, this is Ed Yardini or yeah, yeah, Yardini research. Let's take a look at yeah, Dr. Ed there of where we expect the earnings to be next year, all right? So now I'm talking just theoretical. Where do you expect the market to be 10, 20 years from now? Higher, lower, or sideways? And everyone's gonna say it's gonna be higher. So if you're going, it's gonna be higher, it's almost like as a Christian, <laughs> oh no, don't bring politics or faith in here. I know how the book is written. God wins. It takes a lot of, it, it, it takes a lot of stress off me. And should you too, regardless of your faith, but when you know how the book ends, you say, all right, I'm along for the ride. It's going to be up and down. But at the end of the day, I'm saved. I'm cool with that. It's going to stink. Many years it's going to stink and be painful. But I know how it's written. I know how it ends. I'm, I'm saved. And the same thing with the markets. You know how the book is written. You know how it ends. You're going to be ahead. Of, you're going to be better off. I can't guarantee you that. But the only way you won't be better off, most likely, is if something new happens. In that case, you don't care about the stock market anyway, which is why I got to do your preps. Yeah. All right, but here's Ed. All right, all that says, what do we expect the consensus uh, for 2020? And this is dated 729, 2019, just recent research. So Ed says in his the consensus earnings uh, is estimate. So the consensus is 184.40. That's the consensus of the S&P 500. All right, so you're ready. We're saying that's the consensus of the S&P 500. What does that mean? And that's 11.6% year over year earnings growth. What does that mean? So we take the S&P 500 right now, and if we look at my trusty, can you see that? What does that say? It says it's trading at 20, was at 2980, 2980. That's the S&P 500, 2980. So if we expect to get $184 of earnings on 2980 of price, we take our uh, 2980, divide by 184 earnings, and that gives us a PE ratio of, See, that's 16.2, 16.2. So tell me again that this is high. All right, so if we're getting, I mean, let's just say we don't even get uh, year over year earnings of 10%. Let's say we get year over year earnings of, I don't know, we'll say five and a half percent. And so now instead of earnings being, oh, what's that? So we got 184 minus once, oh, no, no, we got 165 times 1.11. Yeah, so let's go a five and a half percent. So we got one point one sixty five times one point oh five five. We'll have one hundred seventy four will be our earnings. So we take our trusty calculator one seventy four. We got two nine eight zero divided by one seven four. That makes our price to earnings ratio projected. The Ford projected price to earnings ratio is still seventeen point one two. You take that for the market high. I just don't see it. That doesn't mean it won't happen. I have no clue. But, I mean, what's this? Can we just recognize once and for all, we're, A, we're not trading market highs. We're just not. The P-E ratio is higher, yes, comparatively, historically speaking. And the reason for that is simple, because the bond yields are much, much lower. I mean, that's that's what you have to look at. And secondly, or thirdly, when you look at forward projections over the next year, uh, we're trading at multiples well below 20, a P-E ratio. And on top of that, if you look at what we're going to be 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, uh, I think the, the odds are highly probable that would be significantly higher from a price perspective, perspective 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago uh, from now than we are today. And that way, I'd say just invest and be done with it and stop worrying about it. I right, hope this helps smash. Uh, don't forget to comment down below and uh, we'll see you next time.